Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Syracuse Sports. My name is Brent Dax. Surprise! How about a conversation with the greatest quarterback in Syracuse football history and perhaps future Hall of Famer, Donovan McNabb. McNabb was on campus this weekend to receive a prestigious award at Syracuse University and was kind enough to give us a few minutes here on Friday to have a conversation. So I don't want to waste a lot of your time. We're going to get to that coming up here, but I do want to shout out our Syracuse sports insiders become a syracuse sports insider today by texting the word orange to 315-847-3895 now you gotta forgive me insiders usually i give you guys a heads up on this kind of thing and we get your questions and what you would want me to ask a guest like donovan McNabb, but i wanted to surprise you guys with this conversation but our syracuse sports insiders know that they're getting information from syracuse football spring practice had a great tidbit from syracuse lacrosse head coach gary gate about the officiating in the cornell game which got out of hand as the orange get ready to take on north carolina this weekend syracuse basketball transfer portal two big transfers on campus this weekend will syracuse get both of them we're going to keep you updated on all that Emily and I have been doing our series of Syracuse football spring practice podcasts. Our last one was a mailbag edition. If you haven't got a chance to check that out, make sure you subscribe and follow along for all the podcasts. And you guys have been amazing with your questions, what you want Emily and I to look out for at Syracuse football spring practice as the spring game gets closer and closer. We're just over a week away from that. It's just $3.99 a month. You can try it free for two weeks and you can cancel anytime. But why would you do that when you could text me directly anytime with what you want to know and your opinions about Syracuse sports? We would love for you to become a Syracuse sports insider today. All right, I'm going to get out of the way and let you guys listen to the greatest quarterback in Syracuse football history, Donovan McNabb. So, Donovan, you're, you're getting this prominent alumni award here at Syracuse, and I'm wondering, are you at a point in your life where – you're appreciating that people are starting to honor you for things other than football? Uh, I wouldn't say that so much. I mean, obviously, for any athlete, any, I wouldn't say student because everybody's older now, but um, I guess every individual that kind of wanted to leave a legacy, appreciated their time, uh, continued to touch the lives of others, um, uplift the spirits and the emotions of others that may need it um, and just kind of leave a mark. Uh, it's rewarding to know that people have recognized and understood their journey, their path, uh, their mindset. Um, and it's, it's one that I think we cherish as individuals, uh, but it doesn't stop. It continues on and we continue to, to try to change the world. So you're still certainly in media and offering some football opinions out there, doing your, your podcast and everything. But what are some other things that you're up to these days that maybe people wouldn't know about? Um, coaching girls softball. Um, I coach uh, club softball, which uh, started an organization in Arizona. I have two teams under my organization. Uh, I coach the 16U level. I have a 14U level as well. Um, you know, we travel. Uh, so we're, we're this year, this summer, I should say, we're going – California a couple of times. We're going to Oklahoma, uh, Colorado, um, you know, so the list goes on of just trying to put these girls on the, on the right platform where they can be seen uh, by a lot of these college, college coaches and college scouts uh, to have an opportunity to possibly receive a scholarship to a four-year university, continue to fulfill their dream. Uh, and have fun throughout the process. This is a fun time for a lot of my freshmen and sophomores because, you know, it's early stages, and they're watching a lot of these girls who are playing at the Stanford's, UCLA's, Oklahoma's, Arkansas, Texas A&M, ASU, uh, and they see themselves in their shoes. So uh, this is their opportunity now to be seen, continue to progress, uh, continue to watch those girls and emulate their game and try to add it to theirs. So, of course, uh, Lexi's here at Syracuse. Right. And I'm, I'm curious. So my daughter's going to college in the fall. Okay. And I didn't know what approach to take with what I do, right? <laughs> do I not talk about it at all? Or do I talk about it all the time and make, it, make her sick of it? So it kind of fell in the middle. 
How did you approach that with, with Lexi and your kids playing sports and, and that whole thing? And here she ends up at Syracuse, and, and you're a sports dad, and she's uh, right here in the spotlight on the basketball team. Well, the funny thing is, as dad, um, anytime we talk, it's a, oh, boy. Uh, no matter if it's, if it's something that's rewarding, uh, no matter if it's a motivational speech, if it's critical, um, or if it's something that could provide confidence, uh, we're dads. So anything we say, it's about timing, but also it's the message. And they hear us, they don't like it as much, but they'll always remember it. And so uh, with Lexi, it was always a conversation. If it was after a game, if it was after training or after practice, if it was being at home, uh, I could call, and I'm hours away, and I'm just like, hey, how's everything going? You okay? You need anything? How to practice go? How's school going? Good. Are you okay? You sure? Or you need anything? No, I'm fine. Okay, good. Well, I just wanted to call and check on you, see how you're doing. You know, love you. Love you too, Dad. And it's like, it's a silence, because she, she knows something else is coming. But then I just end the conversation, and she's like, oh. Okay, but then you call and it's like, hey, you really need to start doing this. You know? <laughs> but it's just us being dads and we care. We love our kids. We want nothing but the best for them. We understand that they're going through adulthood at this point and we're not always going to be there. So you just try to prepare them as well as possible. So Donovan, switching to football, what has been your view of just the change, Fran Brown coming in, what he's done so far, and, 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 and what he's building? Because coaches will come in and say, this is what I want to do. Right. Whereas Fran has come in and has shown receipts. Yeah. Transfer portal. They have the top 10 uh, rated recruiting right now. Yeah, like they, they have hit the ground running here. What's been your view of all this? Well, you have to hit the ground running. And I think the the thing that I am impressed with Fran is – He's trying to get the alumni involved. And for so many years in the past, so many coaches that we brought in, you know, they wanted it their way. They wanted the alums involved, but not really wanted the alums involved. Uh, a lot of the alums were upset of how things were going, how things were carried, not involving us. Uh, you know, we all have kids that, that are playing sports. You know, not that we we're looking for our kid to get a scholarship, but just – our kids to come up and, and see what we were able to to do and, and be uh, and kind of help them with that dream. Maybe some of our kids go to school here, like my daughter's here. Uh, maybe my son comes here, you know, so I'm thinking about bringing him to the spring game next weekend. Um, and he's a freshman. So I just think the um, way he's handling things and he's reaching out to the alums and telling us his message and telling them his path of what he wants to get done and how we can help. Uh, and to see how things are now kind of transpiring is, is promising. I wanted to ask you about that because I was really surprised to hear a number of alums that, that said what you said. And I'm like, if you don't want to listen to Donovan McNabb, and I'm, I could list all the names here, right. right? Like, that's kind of an issue. And it just felt like to me, and, and you tell me what your experience was, not only yourself, but in talking with other alums. Right. You guys just wanted a voice. Like, you right. spent time here. You put skin in the game. You right. just wanted a voice. And now it feels like you're getting that. Well, it, it's... It's a little bit of that, but also, too, I think, you know, when you watch your watch your university and you support your university, you just, as a alum, and you watch us lose by 30. You watch us look awful out there. And uh, then you hear the press conference, and then, you know, all the alums are talking like, man, this is embarrassing. Why are we on national TV? And it's like, well, what can we do to change things? Um, and then it's like, well, I'm – I'm going to come back to a game, and then all of a sudden you're back, and uh, it's it's not as warm, you know, as it should be. Uh, and guys have complained. Um, but the whole thing about it, I think, for uh, where Fran is, is at right now is it reminds me of, like, Colorado. When Dion went into Colorado, uh, he wanted to make it like it was Disney World, you know, where recruits come in and, oh, we got music playing, we're – you know, the guys are practicing hard. They're motivating each other. It's so intense. The facilities are nice. Uh, and that's what we need We because that's where the, the world is now. That's where the era of football, these college college kids are in transfer portal and these high school kids, they want to go to a place where 
they can just have fun. They can play football, they go to school, but it's fun. Uh, and be competitive. And that's what we need to build. And I think for Syracuse, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be way out of left field because that's got to be a big change where our facilities have to be comparable to some of the top universities that are out here to be able to draw those kids. I mean, look at look at where we are right now as far as the parity is concerned. I mean, we got Stanford and, and some of the Pac-12 schools coming in, which SEC's got more teams going in. The you know the uh, some of the other conference, Big Ten has more teams going in. You need to now compete with them on that level to get those type of recruits in to commit, so you could stay here. Because if you're moving and doing all this other stuff, and all of a sudden you start to fall in the new division, that's not going to help at all. You mentioned all the conference realignment, name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal. There's there's so much there. Oh yeah. What's your involvement in that? You've given to the school before. You've given to facilities and everything. Is right. is that NIL game something you're going to dip your your toe in the <laughs> waters, or like what? Where you, where do you stand uh, with that right now? Right now, there's no dipping for me, uh, I, because I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, in a lot of these corporations, I love what they're doing of just getting involved and trying to help these kids out. Obviously, it's, it helps both sides uh, of different organizations. Uh, I have not dipped into it, and at this particular point, it's not something that I'm moving in that direction. Um, I'm more of trying to prepare the youth to get rewarded with a scholarship and possibly get into that, that aspect of things. Uh, and for those that are, are here at the university, uh, what I can do to help them possibly get to that next level uh, by aiding with time and sacrificing a little bit of patience and whatever it may be. Uh, but that's where I am with it. Donovan, you came in as a freshman. You won a competition. Right. And you're leading a team as a freshman. Right. Not an easy thing to do, particularly at the quarterback position. Right. So let's fast forward. Kyle McCord comes in. Right. He's a transfer. Right. and has a short period of time to come in and establish himself as a leader. Right. How does he do that? What kind of advice would you, would you give him in this situation? Bring your experience here uh, with the guys, but also show them your work ethic and your, how diligent you are. Um, show them and explain to them the importance of how that window can close. Um, because he can give his story of his first couple of years at Ohio State where – he was third on the chart, going through spring, competing. All of a sudden, you got C.J. Stroud there. And C.J. Stroud is the freshman. He wins the, wins the starting spot. So every year now, he's got to be two, possibly three. They bring in another recruit or transfer portal. He's competing with them for the two spot or the three spot. Uh, C.J. goes pro. Now he's competing again. And so you always are competing at every position. Each and every day you're competing. If it's – competing against yourself or competing against somebody that they brought in. You have to compete with yourself first and foremost to be able to elevate your game. And so for Kyle, um, he's got to build that trust with the offensive line. He's got to build that trust with the whole offensive unit. And while building up with the whole offensive unit, the whole team has to follow. You brought up C.J. Stroud, NFL drafts coming up here. Yeah. C.J. was a name that came up certainly, but for people to expect him to – be knocking on the door as one of the five or six best quarterbacks in the league in year one. I don't know if we were saying that a year ago. So looking at this group of quarterbacks, yeah. Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. Right. McCarthy, it's just another year where it's going to be a run on quarterbacks here. Is there a quarterback, it could be Caleb, who's going at the top, or two that you look at that you think could do what C.J. Stroud did? At the end of next season, we're talking about a guy that's right there amongst top 10 quarterbacks in the league. Anybody that stand uh, out to you? We got to understand that's a rarity. That's a rarity. I mean, even with – well, Patrick only only played a few games. And Patrick's path was sort of like mine, uh, where Andy understood I want to get him some reps, get him some experience. And I remember the Denver Broncos game, he started Patrick because I think they had already clinched. Uh, and he started Patrick. Patrick threw for over 250 in that game. Um, and Denver's not an easy place to play. Uh, played well in that game. And I think the, the next game, Alex started, and then Patrick played a little bit. So now it becomes that – that I was a freshman. That rookie season for him became of 
he's their future. For CJ, it was, you're the starter. And CJ just continued to climb. But I said, I remember saying this in the pre-draft conversation that I had with a bunch of people. I thought that CJ Stroud was the best passer, pocket passer, coming out in the draft. Bryce Young, Bryce Young is a solid pocket passer. He played well at Alabama, showed ability to run. The thing that people wanted to hold against CJ was they didn't think that he would utilize his mobility. And what game did he do it against? And what and what coach did he do it against? Fran. He did it against Georgia. He ran the ball. I think he had like six or eight rushes that were timely, that were first downs, kept chains going. That answered to the critics. But the critics wouldn't use that to eliminate that part of the conversation. They use that again. Oh, well, he has mobility, but he won't run. And the game is not about your running ability. The game is about playing from the pocket first. And so I said that. But I thought going to Houston where it was almost – they were rebuilding. New head coach, new quarterback, trying to build a new identity. Uh, a lot of young players. Um, and I remember when they, they signed Dalt, uh, Schultz, their tight end. Every quarterback needs a security blanket. And Schultz is a very good tight end. But what I see from them, and I look at this class with CJ, and I look at this class, I think Jaden Daniels is that guy. And I think Jaden Daniels, it really all depends on where they land to. Uh, I don't know if he's that guy if he ends up in New England. Could he be that guy if he ends up in Washington? Yes, he could be. Uh, but again, you have to look at the weapons around him where you can't say uh, it's promising. But one thing you can't pass up on is Caleb. The thing with Caleb, he's walking into a great situation. Now, as far as play calling is concerned, I don't know if that office coordinator and that staff is, is it for them. But when you look around what they have with, with Swift and, and with Allen, uh, with Moore at receiver, with, with their tight end, their young tight end, that's very good. Uh, he has some weapons, and we've seen what he can do with weapons. You know, on that note quickly, Donovan, as somebody from Chicago, how has that city, that organization, been the desert of quarterbacks forever it is amazing when you look back but you know what's funny is that you bring that up it's never been about the quarterbacks it's been it, defense it's linebackers about, right defense, yeah and it's about running running game and they've kept that mystique for years where they tried to go and get a quarterback when they went and got Mitch Trubisky it wasn't about Mitch Trubisky coming in and wowing you with with everything because he only started 15 games in college and so you look at it in a sense of they had a running attack. They had two-headed running attack with uh, Montgomery and, and Co was it Cohen, I think. Mm -hmm. um, then they had some just okay receivers. They went and got a bunch of tight ends that didn't work out. Um, and their defense was good. And so now you go get Justin Fields, and Justin shows you a little something in his first, first, year, first two years. But it's not the passing that you want. Then you go get DJ Moore, and then he's throwing the football. Okay, it took him a little bit, but they got things going. But now you hit, look at this class, and it's like, do we keep Justin? Do we go? And what happens? People don't understand the process. So they're trying to trade Justin, supposedly, secretly. But everyone knows. Then you go get Keenan Allen. Then you get DeAndre Swift. And it's kind of like, are you getting this for Justin? Or – and then the combine happens. And so we're trying to do right by Justin. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. And so they're making it comfortable for the next regime. And they're making an easy transition. So now you go into the draft, get your quarterback. Now let's go get some defensive players. You already have Sweat on the outside who was a double-digit sack guy. You didn't bring back your safety. So now you got to go get a safety. You got to go get a defensive tackle make it a quarter, and then get a couple offensive line. You already have your quarterback in the first pick. So he's working out for Caleb. Donovan, uh, last couple things for me. In 1999, when you were going through the draft process, yeah. there's a lot of things said. You probably thought you were going all over the, the all map. Over the map. All over the map, right? You end up, of course, in that second pick in Philly. But 
What's the one thing you look back on in that draft process? And basically, <laughs> I'll ask it this way. What's the dumbest thing you heard in that draft process, either about you or just something where you look back like, man, how could somebody who works at the National Football League think this? Uh, Mel Kuyper said I wouldn't wouldn't be able to learn an offense for four to five years, be comfortable in an offense. For Mel, four to five years. come on. Mel hasn't been right in the last, like, 25 years. Uh, ever, ever since, like, the third, fourth pick when everybody knows who's going where, um, he's everywhere. Um, it's, it's just, you know, there's always doubts. You know, he came from a, an option offense, which we ran more of a spread offense in our last two years, uh, to, you know, can he learn to anticipate the throw and throw receivers open? Is he a pocket passer? Is he just a running quarterback? You know, you hear all of this stuff. Um, and at the end of the day, you got to make a play. When the play is there to be made, you got to make a play. Uh, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, can you make those three or four plays in the course of a game to help you win the game? Period. Point blank, period. And so it's not rocket science. It's uh, can he throw for 300 yards a game? Is he a guy that's going to throw five touchdowns and one pick? Or is he a guy that's going to throw four picks and no touchdowns? It's can he make the play when the play is there to be made to help us win the game? Last thing for me, how much – does the Hall of Fame mean to you? I know you've said in the past you think you should be in the Hall of Fame, and I know a lot of guys take different approaches with this. Right. Does it matter? Does it not? At this point of your career looking at it, of course we've seen some Syracuse guys get, right. in, get in recently. How much does that mean to you? To be honest with you, it doesn't mean or carry that much weight for me. Um, the thing that it that hits home for me is I want my kids to, to be able to witness and to be a part of the things that I was able to accomplish in the NFL. So uh, is it something that I dwell on? No. Um, but you always see your window closing as you get older and your kids getting older. And so um, would I love to, to be in the Hall of Fame? I would love to. Did I play to, to make the Hall of Fame? No, I didn't. Um, would it be rewarding? Yes. If I don't make it, will it hurt? Would it bother me? No. Uh, but I just think at the end of the day, should I be in or should I get in? Yes. Um, does the timing bother me? Not really. Um, I think when it starts to affect you is when you make the 16 to 8. And that's the thing. is It's kind of almost to the point where it's like, or I should say, the, yeah, I think it's the 8. Um, and that's when it starts to hit home a little bit. Like, I had a friend of mine and Tory Holt who who was one of the eight, I think. He made it to the he made it to the sixteen. Um and then they have to go from there. So uh, that's the tough part. I've made thirty two a couple of times. Um and we'll just see. We'll just see. If it happens, it'll be great for my family. It'll be great for all my friends and uh guys that I played with here at the university. I'm very biased as a Buffalo Bills fan, but if Jim Kelly's in the Hall of Fame, Donovan McNabb. Should be in the Jim's Hall of Fame. my guy. I love Jim. I love Jim. Uh, even to this day we talk. Uh, I'm so happy that, that he's up and kicking. Um, but our numbers are, yeah. My num- <laughs> They're very, very similar. Very similar. Yes. Um, he's played in four Super Bowls. Um, but, you know, Jim's my guy. There's a couple guys like that. But, um, you know, if it happens, it happens. It's great. Especially here in, in just kind of in the New York area. Um you know, it would be big. Donovan, it's great to see you. Welcome you. back. Congratulations once again on a prestigious award here at Syracuse. And it's always great to catch up, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.